Hey there, once again folks, welcome to another Train Simulator video. This is one that I've been eager to get my hands on since it was teased many, many months ago. This, of course, is the Southern Pacific's Mount Shasta line uh, set back in the 80s. What we're going to do is just kind of hop all over. First, we're going to take a look at the rolling stock and the locomotives and then look at the actual map itself. So just to preface what you're going to get with this is uh let's see about 108 route miles you're going to get the sd40 t2 or tunnel motor the sd9e which was a uh, specific rebuild of the sd9 uh, and then you're going to get eight types of rolling stock seven career scenarios etc etc so we'll go over the line a bit more um, further on in the video but first we're going to take a look at the rolling stock here itself so I've got everything lined up here that you're going to get with the route. You do get empty and loaded variants of such. Um, the first things we've got lined up here, we'll go right to left. I've got uh, two SP boxcars. Cushion car, of course, they are uh, branded. The, the logo looks pretty good. It's relatively sharp. Um, that doesn't look too bad. Looks nice. So it's got the uh, the ribbed door. It's a uh, it's a fairly decent model. I think it's I think it's a reused model. I don't think it's anything entirely new, but uh, it's a decent looking model. It's not too shabby. Now this is uh, by I think Milepost Simulations, um, which have released things such as uh, the Wasatch Grade, uh, Yellow, Yellowhead Pass, or Tete Jaune. Um, what else? Uh, also, the Arizona Divide, which came out last year, which, uh, as far as route building and scenery, was very, very nice. So I feel like they are getting a bit better. Um, so this is milepost simulations as well, for those that may not have been aware. So this is a different boxcar. It's got the different types of doors. Over here, we got some bulkhead flats. Uh, so you essentially have two different types of lumber and then some pipes. Uh, very similar to the uh, Yellowhead uh, rolling stock. This route uh, in real life, back in the day, most especially saw a lot of wood and lumber products moving to and fro uh, British Columbia and uh, to, to regions beyond. There's your, uh, your pipe car. The car, the models look pretty good. They do. I mean, they're definitely... Not the worst stuff in the game, not by a country mile. Uh, and then down here, of course, is the uh, SPC 40 4 caboose, which uh, again looks pretty good. It's a cool looking caboose. It's when they went to the uh, the bay window after uh, used to have the, the cupola up top, and, and dudes started losing the appendages and their heads and things, and so they went to the, uh, the bay side window. So no more walking on top of the trains, etc. Getting on top of the train. It's a nice looking, uh, nice looking boxcar though. It's nice to have. I'm gonna say nice a lot of times. It's nice to have some more Southern Pacific era stuff for TS. Donner Pass is a bit long in the tooth. Uh, Tehachapi, yeah, sure. I mean, but it's you know that's a dovetail route and it's BNSF and UP, so it's not really specific to uh, Southern Pacific. Interior looks sort of modeled. I don't know if you can get in here or not. We'll find out a bit later, but it's a good looking caboose. I like the paint. I like the weathering and the texturing. It's not all crazy shiny. Like it, it looks, it looks pretty legit. It doesn't look too bad. The trucks look nice. Wheels look nice and weathered. It's got the little dealio on there for the, uh, the generator, which is pretty cool. I think it just had it on the one side. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty neat. I don't know that I've noticed that before in trains until now. That's pretty uh, interesting. All right. Up here, we have got the covered hopper. SUPAC, or SP. What's that? A, th a three bay? A trio? A tree B? Uh, just standard hopper. Uh, we got the flat car. Of course, you're going to get loaded and unloaded. This is one variant here. Looking pretty nice. Uh, let's see. This is the wood chip gone, I think. Yeah, it's a big, big chungus boy. Yeah, there we go. 
And the fill doesn't look bad either. It's, it looks nice. And the logo. I mean, I'm I'm pretty satisfied with the logos personally. They look they look fairly sharp compared to a lot of other uh, content that uh, comes out for Train Simulator. Now we've got the SSW or Cotton Belt box car, which is pretty cool to have some Cotton Belt stuff in the game as well, uh, which was very much a part of SP. Hydra Cushion. And then we got the Cotton Belt uh, covered hopper as well, which uh, it's nice nice to mix it up a bit, which is which is kind of cool instead of just having uh, SP stuff. And then up here we got our tanks. You're going to get white and black. And they're you know they're they're pretty good looking tanks. I'll be honest. I mean they're they they look like they're painted and textured and weathered fairly nice. Not too crazy. Not too clean. Not too shiny. They look uh, they look all right. They look you know very very serviceable. Uh, if I'm honest. And then back here we got the trailers on flat cars or TOFCs. Now you know they look all right. The model. It's you know I don't think it's anything new you're gonna get two models by the way so that's number one there with those two trailers and then this is numero dos so they look a little bit different but the only thing that sucks is not having the branding on the side uh southern pacific ran a what is the something i can't remember the logo it's like a it's like a pigtail service or golden pig or bronze pig or something but anyway, it'd be nice to have some, some logos on here because it kind of is not very fun um, or interesting in my opinion. Just just having bare, 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 bare uh, rolling stock. But anywho, that is the rolling stock you get. So quite a bit, like I said, uh, loaded and unloaded variants as well. And we'll scooch on up here to uh, our locomotives. All right. We'll do... Oh, I'm... If I'm honest, I'm geeked about the SD9. I friggin' love the SD9. This is an SD9E, but it's still an SD9. Um, but I am, I am totally geeked about that, so we'll save it for last. We'll, we'll look at the... Uh, the uh, tunnel motor. The dashy boy. Go ahead and click on it here. Just sit here and listen to it hum, do its thing for a minute. It it sounds like some pretty common dovetail sounds. Yeah, yeah. We got the uh, the air hose thing, the the little dryers. So, uh, the SD40T-2 was a tunnel motor. It's essentially a six-axle, uh, built by Electromotive Division, EMD. I think I said EDM the other day, you know, like the techno music, and somebody called me out on it. Actually, like ten people did. I know it's, I know it's EMD. I just mix stuff up, because I like to chew on my tongue a lot. So, anyway, they were built between, uh, 74 and 1980. They had the 645E3 power plant rated at about 3,000 horsepower. They were called tunnel motors because they had cooling modifications to them for going through snow sheds and tunnels and uh, things of that nature where they would typically overheat otherwise. Um, they essentially prevented sucking exhaust back into the engine itself with the, uh, the radiator intakes at the rear of the loco and below. So heat and smoke and all that crap rises, right? So it would come in down here. This big old gap. So that's what a tunnel motor is. Exactly what it sounds like. Very, very bare bones. Named it perfectly. Meant to go through tunnels. We'll name it a tunnel motor. Uh, about 312 of these were built. Uh, it's essentially an SD40-2 with cooling mods, if you think about it. The operators were Southern Pacific, Cotton Belt, the Rio Grande and Union Pacific. Now, Southern Pacific had 229 of these suckers, so they had quite the majority. The numbers ranged from 8230 to 8573. Uh, so just looking at these so far, they look to be pretty legit number-wise. Um, 
but anyway, yeah, they just they just helped overheating, going through snow sheds and tunnels and all that good stuff. So the intakes were moved to the bottom of the car body, and they're cool as hell. I think some of these still exist and run to this day, uh, serving some industries in Southern California somewhere. I can't remember exactly where, but they're cool as hell, tunnel motors. I mean, the rolling stock that comes with this pack, you know, they're both very cool engines in real life, and it's just uh, it's nice to see these. Anyway, I'll shut up blabbing. We'll take a look at this thing. It's got that old, old prime mover sound. It doesn't sound very good. Uh, paint on the steps look nice. It uh, the the paint honestly, like when I first plopped these down a moment ago before I started the video here, I thought they look pretty decent, honestly. Um, you know, when you look at some other developers and D, uh, DTG themselves, these these look all right. I mean, they're dovetail models essentially, but uh, SP looks fairly crispy. The P is doing a weird thing there. It looks it looks strange. I don't know that they actually did like this little zoop at the top like that. It looks a bit funky. I know they. Uh, they released media of these and some people gave feedback and so the the lettering themselves were corrected um, so yeah the numbers look good it's like the right font all that good stuff I like the uh, the striping on the steps it really really bumps it up a notch looks nice nice little detail uh, otherwise the paint looks looks pretty good they look fairly weathered uh, which is nice not too crazy again you know the the alpha channel isn't going bananas it looks it looks relatively flat nice and nice and spicy um, they honestly look all right I mean you know no they're not 4k textures and in, in hardcore but uh, they look pretty good they do look pretty good the wheels and trucks down here and either these are very old as well old model just uh, updated slightly here and there beastie boy all right let's take a look at the roof and then we'll hop in this thing fans doing fan things Southern Pacific had very specific lighting I think this was the uh, the accidental or emergency light that would pop on if if the train uh, took a dump Ford model looks okay. Yeah, I mean, the models themselves don't look bad. Like I said, these models existed in the game. They were just touched up, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go ahead and hop in here, though. Now, what's cool about these, as you'll notice, in Southern Pacific had a lot of these as well, is the L-shaped window. So, I mean, you've got a lot of room to just lay your eyes upon the beautiful scenery around this place um, and if I am not mistaken I think the interior has been updated a little bit it definitely looks a little more up to snuff by today's standards uh, the brake handle and the apparatus look pretty good got little notches in there Let's see stamps on those uh, those nuts there or bolts nuts Jesus what am I saying nuts uh, I think this seat is old I think that's an OG seat right there can't really tell but it looks it looks all right it just looks like it was updated texture wise and color wise um, motor control motor turn that on here sand work 
Yeah, you just can't click the button. There's our bell. Yeah, it looks it looks a little updated in here. It looks okay. Can you open the windows? Yes. It's not sounding like there's any occlusion sound wise. Sounds the same throughout. Um yeah, I mean, it looks okay. Like, a little of this, like the, the edges up here are a little bit muddy, blocky, splotchy uh, up here as well, which you can see that pretty bad. So it looks like maybe some places were taken a liking to as far as updating where others were not, uh, such as this Aria. But the console looks pretty good. You can see the light up there doing its thingy. Heater. Let's check our reverser here. Oh, those old horrible sounds. <laughs> oh, that noise. Tick. It's like grabbing a wooden spoon and then flicking it on a countertop. That's what it sounds like. Tick. Let's see. Let's check out our wipers. So it looks like just on and off. They make a little noise. What do we got here? Step lights. Instrument lights. PCS open. Defudge? None of these work, naturally. Turn the headlights on. Now, these do have that crazy, crazy headlight brightness. Um, let's see what we got back here. Just gonna turn every damn thing on we can. These don't make any sound at all. Hmm. It, it looks like this area might have been updated a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, and these these diagrams on the wall in here. I don't I don't know if I remember these. I didn't spend a whole hell of a lot of time with the DNRGW uh, tunnel motor. But uh, I think that's new. The uh, dispatch and tones. It looks it looks crispy. It looks a little more crispy. It's still like this around here. The the window trim right here is still like the. Eh, eh, but this looks pretty good. All right, lights are a bit bright. All right, horn. Well, it's different. You know, I'll give it that. It's not the worst horn um, in the game that's ever been released, ever. Uh, now, I think... I don't know which horn, but I think... Um, JL, the dude that is, Milepost Simulations, got the horn sound from Mike Durden. Um, Like, it, it, it honestly sounds okay inside. There's a little bit of a loop, but it's edited enough to where it's not super noticeable. But that bit at the end sounds like it's just echoing off of, like, the Grand Canyon. And it sounds kind of weird. Like it goes... Uh, <laughs> it's kind of strange. And it does it every time. We'll do a, a destant to far away to. Yeah, I mean, it's not a terrible sound. It's just that weird bit at the end. Um, not a huge fan of it. As you can see, we got our class lights on and all that good stuff. The lights are super duper bright. Luckily, you can turn these puppies down quite a bit. I think that's the lowest right there. Then you got your super swinger lights at the top doing their thing. Which is kind of cool. Very on brand for Southern Pacific back in the day. God bless SP. Why did why did they have to marry? Have an affair with UP. It's just it's a shame. It's a shame. Anyway, I'll check the bell out. Let's 
Sound steel. They were steel, I believe. I don't know what that sounds from. It doesn't ring any bells. <laughs> pun intended. Honestly, didn't mean to pun that. It just happened. Um, it sounds familiar. I can't. I can't touch on what though. All right, we'll load it up. Interior-wise, so we got it neutral. Can hear the air pump. Kinda. It's not making any noise at all with the the handle movement. Train brake. Now the PCS is open. Good going, you dingus. Uh, it's got a bail function. Okay. Nice. It's just they're not... They're not the greatest air brake sounds ever, but hey. Alright, we'll pump it back up here. And they have that um, advanced braking, but not the, the overly annoying style advanced braking. So it's... It, you know, they're not horrible, but it's still kind of... You know, it is what it is. All right, we'll notch it up here. Old 645 sounds are old. Well, um, good golly, Miss Molly. If I'm not mistaken, are those like Kuju uh, Dash 2 sounds? That's what they remind me of. All right, now for what I've been excited about for this. God bless an SD9. Things are so damn cool. It's basically a GP9 with an extra axle per truck. And uh, they're cool as hell. Just a little bit about them in case one may or may not know about them. Uh, this is the Southern Pacific SD9E. Uh, in the mid-70s, SP started sending these uh, to the shops down in Sacramento, California to ex essentially give them an extension on life, buying them, you know, 10 to 15 more years. Uh, units rebuilt got the hump or umbrella cowl behind the cab to protect electrics from water, snow, uh, any, any kind of liquids that don't jive with electrics. Um, the cowl lengths varied uh, per locomotive. They weren't all extremely identical. Uh, the rear number boards were filled in. So you can see right there where they were. But I think they still painted them on, if not one number instead of one each side. So I don't know if that's missing. I don't know if they did that to all the SD90s. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't know if that's missing or not. Uh, and they all had different light packages. So a lot of the lighting on the front and rear of the locomotive changed uh, from unit to unit as well. Um, but they had different packages, uh, all of them lo uh, losing, I was going to say using, losing the Mars light, sadly. Uh, there were a few, number 4450 and 4451, that retained steam generators for passenger services, uh, if you will. But what's cool and what's neat about these, and I'm assuming why they were chosen for this route for train simulators, most of these E's were assigned uh, to NorCal and Oregon, which is basically where we're at. Most of this route is in Northern California. The top 
uh, 25% maybe is an Oregon. Uh, but essentially it's a six axle EMD. They were built between 1954 and 1959. Uh, they had a 567C prime mover rated at 1750 horsepower. Uh, similar to the SD7 but improved C type trucks. Uh, the engine uh, and were a bit easier to maintain. Crews liked them a bit better, uh, apparently. All that good stuff. 515 of these things were built. Essentially, a GP9 with extra axles, like I said a moment ago. SP had 150 of these suckers, ranging from 5340 to 5444. Uh, they also had 5449 to 5493. So, that is that. All right. Oh god, I still have control of that. Son of a bee. There we go. Okay, sorry. Uh, I think they look good. I think they look good. I mean, you throw a sound mod and, and maybe some new light color on this thing. And uh, it'll be re- It'll be re- indeed. Uh, Weathering-wise, I think this thing looks pretty damn good. Uh, it stands out from that that tunnel motor big time. I mean, you got some rust, some corrosion, streaks on the gas tank. I mean, the thing looks all right. I feel like this thing was touched up uh, exterior-wise while this thing was touched up interior-wise. And they kind of lack vice versa, uh, you know, what one got the other one didn't type of thing from the pictures I've seen I haven't been in this thing yet um, but it looks pretty good it looks all right weathering wise the trucks look cool got a lot of weathering down there I don't there was also a DNR GW SD9 as well um, from the uh, the soldier summit stuff in train sim uh, those were very dark so they were kind of hard to tell but I don't remember them looking this weathered and textured I mean, they look all right. Even the red down here has got a bunch of blotchiness, just crud, grease, mold all down around the side. Down here, it's weathered. It's a lighter color on these panels. I mean, this looks all right. Honestly, this looks all right. The numbers look pretty good. The font looks nice. Um, I don't know what these things are. So, what the hell's going on with that? like you can see them at certain angles. Must be something to do with the the numbering script or however the hell that works. Uh, but yeah, these look good, man. I, li I like the way these look big time, even up here in the grills. Some weathering. They look like they might have been touched up a little bit. It would have been nice to have the Southern Pacific itself a little more crispy. And it looks kind of funny the way it's laid on here you know the, the the letters on top of the body itself it looks kind of funky but uh it's not too shabby man I, I like that it looks pretty good got our numbers pilot looks okay it's it's definitely weathered uh, better than some stuff we see in train sim. That's for damn show. Nice rivets in there. Are those new? Were those were those always that crispy? That horn model does not look good. That one that one looks better, a lot better. There's, it's like clipping right there. You see a clipping, so it's kind of be. A little bit of weathering on the top as well, which looks nice. I'm not seeing any numbers on the rear. I uh, I thought they had numbers painted on. Anyway, the model itself looks good. Let's stop uh, jerking the gherkin and get in here. All right, so 
It looks like the DNR GW SD9, like tat for tat, pretty much, or tit for tat, tit for tit. You get what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, this is this is some pretty old stuff in here, and the the frames I noticed even putting these down. I don't know if it's the lighting, but the frames with some of these aren't the best. It's relatively smooth, but uh. Let's see, it could be the light. Yeah, it is most definitely the light. So it shoots up to like 40 frames, pop that light on, 22. It's a lot slower. But we need to see, so. Um, I think all this is, is pretty standard. Uh, can you open the window? No. That stinks. No door. No oh, door! Um... The angle in these is weird as hell, uh, so you can't see the nose. You don't know that the nose is there. Um, it, I just feel like it needs to be over to the right a bit more, but the DNR GW is like that as well, so it's nothing new here. We'll hop over to this side. The floor looks bad. Yeah, it all looks pretty bad in here. C compared to the uh, tunnel motor back there behind us, interior-wise, it doesn't look that great. It looks same, same. Samey same. See what we can mess with here. Yeah, sounds are all still there. Eh. Got our radio. Let's see what can we mess with here. Step lights, lights, gauge lights. Number boards and front lights. Motor. I'm gonna turn that on. Check the reverser. Now this is the I think it's the old GP9 or F7 sound but it sounds okay it honestly sounds better than that tunnel motor over there so take that at uh, face value I guess horn all right so it's the same and it's still got that weird crap at the end that kind of Yeah, if that, if that could have been edited out, it would have been a bit better. Hold on. Yeah, same horn. So the gyro lights are doing their thing. Gyrating. Gyroing. So yeah, this is the rolling stock. What you get, this thing's probably going to sound like the GP9. It's got a 567 in it. We'll, we'll run it up here anyway. sounds a little bit different. I can't tell because we're next to this damn tunnel motor. Let's let's scooch up the road here and get away from this thing. Notch six from a standstill. Like a dingus. Here we go. tell if that's the same sound. Alright, 
let's try that again. Uh oh, I think we had an accident. Somebody call the paramedics. Yeah, he's all up in that damn tractor trailer. What's going on here? Traffic jam. Oh, me. I'm sorry. Gonna be there a minute, folks. Okay, let's run this thing up now. Like, it almost seems like it's slower to rev. I was expecting it to be just that old school 567 sound. It still doesn't have that that juiciness to it, you know. That. Uh, uh. Bell. Forgot the bell. Bell sounds pretty good. You hear the click. The uh, air. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. It, you know, the, the DNR GW SD9 could have sounded the same. I don't remember. Like I said, I never really spent a lot of time with those. Uh, but the thing looks pretty damn good. I like the way it looks. I do like the way the thing looks. If it had some good sounds, um, you know, maybe a touched up interior, uh, some some toning down of the nuclear uh, headlight coloring, this thing would be uh, one spicy meatball. I mean, it's not bad as is, but uh, anyway, enough blabbing. We're going to check out uh, the route now. All right, so now that we have got the rolling stock out of the way, uh, let's take a look at the route itself, which is what I'm more inclined uh, on purchasing the route was all about because Arizona Divide, you know, looked pretty good. Um, you know, but as far as I remember, uh, and there's a lot of other stuff that you can run here instead of just the aforementioned uh, rolling stock that we got, but Again, this is the Southern Pacific's Mount Shasta line. It's 108 miles between Dunsmuir, California and Klamath Falls, Oregon. It's by milepost simulation. Uh, the line was part of Southern Pacific's Oregon division, uh, Dunsmuir to Klamath Falls, also called the Black Butte Sub. A butte, again, is kind of like a mountain with a flat top and sheer sides. It looks like it says butt E, but it's butte. Uh, and it connected to the Siskiyou sub, which is uh, very famed and gorgeous in itself. Uh, it was built back in the 1800s by Central Pacific on its way to meet, um, I always forget, over, over east uh, as part of the Transcontinental Railroad. And it was by far the most difficult bit of uh, track building that they had to do across the Sierra Nevadas, um, etc. But... Uh, Anyway, SP has been a part of it since 1885, only 15 years after it was uh, started its, its building. Uh, there's speeds up to 60 mile an hour, up to the northern bits, uh, lumber hauled, a lot of the route for the Pacific Northwest and Canada. Intermodal as well. Um, you're going to get the rolling stock we went over, and Amtrak operated through here. Uh, still does the Coast Starlight. Uh, I can't remember the old the old passenger names that ran through here, but there was some other stuff as well. But this line as it sits here is set in 1983, uh, essentially adding to SP's other known grueling passes like Tachapi and Donner. Um, so yeah, let's just uh, stop blabbing and take a look. But uh, it... The highest elevation here is like 5,000 something feet and sits up and around this area called Grass Lake. And uh, it's got grades of like 2 to 2.2%. It's a little bit more steep on the southern side going north, I believe. So we're on the extreme southern end. We are down here. This is the portal to Redding, California. IA. Uh, you can see right off the bat, you're not really going to be coming down here, but you know, nothing was added under here. This wasn't blended well. Um, <laughs> like I said, you're not really, really going to be coming down here anyway, so it's not a huge deal. Let's just hope the rest of the line doesn't look like that. You've got our signals, which look pretty good. 
This is one of very many we're about to see. Uh, the foliage as well looks like I would imagine in Northern California. It's a beautiful area. I've never been there, but I've seen plenty of video and pictures, and it, it looks pretty legit. Um, I think a lot of it's pine, and uh, I can't remember the other type of tree. But it looks pretty good. Uh, we got our, our telegraph or phone pole, power poles over here starting on the left. It looks like the ground is starting to uh, match the tracks here, which looks nice. It's blended. We'll zoop up here. We got our blinker. Dunn's mirror on the box there. Here's our lights. Colors look pretty good. Splits up. Got a couple of houses down here. Now, this is a whistle board, but there are a couple of... I'm going to open the, uh, the manual up here real quick because they're... Thankfully is a manual and with a lot of the milepost simulation routes, they're fairly in-depth um, As far as the rolling stock in the area the signage and all that good stuff So I'm gonna have that open just to make sure I don't totally miss anything and it it covers the uh, You know the type of signals for this era in this region, which is nice. So This over here to the right if I'm not mistaken, I believe is the Sacramento River um that doesn't look too good. Uh, you know, maybe there's sandbars or whatever here, but that, that definitely could have been sunken in. The bridge looks pretty good. Got the railroad over here. Railroad bridge as well. Uh, this is a crossing. That's not what I was going to say. Three school buses. Jesus. I didn't hear the bells ringing earlier. Uh, also, so we'll have to check that out. This is one of my biggest pet peeves with train sim routes is shoreline. Like, this doesn't look that great. Um, you know, I don't know. Just, just more detail along it would be nice is all I'm saying. A couple of manual switches here. We are coming up into Dunsmuir now. This is where I had the uh, rolling stock set. Couple of rapids. The wayside looks pretty good. It looks like it's blended fairly nice into the ground down here. That looks nice. That always helps a root. And it looks... The buildings and cars look appropriate to the era that it's supposed to sit within. Uh, this is a, a beautiful area coming up through here. Jeez. This looks very nice. Got this embankment with all kinds of rocks and stuff. So this is Dunsmuir. A little bit about Dunsmuir. Kind of, kind of some funny stuff with Dunsmuir here. Um, it is a small city that is nestled within the Trinity Mountains, and it's got a motto, which is funny, and I'll get to why it's funny. Best water on earth. Um, so, <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of funny. It's got an Am Amtrak Coast Starlight stop up here. You'll see the station. It's currently got a railroad museum with a turntable as well. Um, but I'll explain in a minute why that's funny about it having the best water on earth. Um, but anyway, this is the town. Got another crossing. River still runs alongside here. There's the rolling stock that I set up. I believe there is a, a live cam here. Uh, this railroad museum have a have a, a live cam set up that you can watch if you so choose. Of buildings. There's some stuff sitting around the yard. Um, you know, it could be a little more dirty just to make it seem a little bit more realistic, but uh, it's aight, I guess. Here's the turntable. Sorry, just glazed right by that. Got the painted bit on there, which is nice. The town. 
nestled right on the railroad, railroad town, of course. Um, which is why I believe the, the town itself cropped up due to the railroad. Um, it was named something else. And a... Uh, I think he was a Canadian fella. Came down and, and basically gave a bunch of money to the area or something. And was like, hey, if you if you change the name to my name, his last name was Dunsmuir. Uh, he's like, I'll put a fountain here. And so he put a fountain and they changed the name of the town. Something like that. <laughs> I may have missed uh, a lot of details, but this is the uh, the Amtrak station. This one was closed uh, many years ago, uh, but the town came together and kind of raised money and fixed it up because they, they needed to add a restroom and handicap access and things like that. So they raised enough money to, to keep it open, which is pretty cool. Saving, uh, you know, saving history, especially railroad history, which is nice. Um, the buildings look pretty good. This is all laid out fairly well. The, uh, the inclines and all that. Got a burger joint up here. It's a pretty town, though, in real life. Look at the pictures of the place. I believe this is the interstate up here. I-5, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, the rail yard in Dunsmuir. So, the funny thing about having the best water on Earth, that's their climate anyway. There was a massive uh, train derailment. It's, you know, it's not funny, but it's just funny that it's named best water on Earth after this. Uh, and a ton of stuff fell into the river. Uh, it was one of the, the largest hazardous chemical spills in California history. Uh, I think it was back in 1991, an SP train derailed into the river itself. Uh, up here at Cantera Loop. I can't remember exactly what it spilled into the river, um, but it, it wasn't good. And to this day, a lot of the native aquatic species uh, are still recovering from it. So it's just kind of funny that they claim the, you know, the best water on earth and then that happened. So, you know, funny, not funny. Haha, <laughs> that's I-5. Bridges look pretty nice. Again, the, the water side does not look that great. I mean, I feel like that's pretty on par for uh, milepost stuff, though. I mean, Wasatch looks like this. Yellowhead Pass. Got the power going up the mountainside there. It's a gorgeous area, though. I'll just zoop right along here. It's nice. A little bit of open rock face where they probably had to cut into it there. These bridges look pretty good. I like the embankment on either side. Now this is built up pretty nice. This looks nice here. All the wayside here on the side of the tracks. That looks pretty good. It's nice and smooth. I just got done the other day saying on the Powder River Basin that I'd never really seen any that looked this good. And this, you know, this looks almost just as good. It's blended nicely. It looks all right. A little culvert under there. So this is pretty neat. This is a nice little detail. It's essentially just super strong cable to prevent rockfall spilling out onto the tracks. I think there was some of that on Yellowhead Pass, if I'm not mistaken. This looks pretty nice. What's that, a whistle post? Yeah. Must be the mile markers. It's pretty, pretty scenery, though. I'm trying to stay level with uh, where a train would run. A little more rocky through here. Seems a lot deeper. Like the ground is getting higher around you. First bridge. Good looking bridge. I, I should have changed the time of day because the sun's like hidden behind the mountain. Totally forgot about mountains. We are coming up to the Cantera Loop here. Oh, here we go. Sunlight! Yeah, this looks pretty good. 
the wayside here. That looks all right. Oh, okay. Very nice. Good looking bridge. Signal mast. So it double tracks up through here. A lot of it is single, if I'm not mistaken. It kind of goes back and forth between the two. It's another mast. Very nice. Got some more of the, uh, the rock guard wall fence thing contraption keep on zooping got another bridge now some of this doesn't look all that hot like uh you know when it's not hidden with with shrubberies or trees like that does not look good at all and you're not really going to be over there per se, but when you're just chooching across here and you're just like, la da da, and you look, it's like, ah! Very nice. Oh, here we go. Good looking bridge. I like the, uh, the stonework. Looks pretty nice. See, I feel like in some areas the the the, the water side, the sh the shoreline gets a little bit more help from stuff like these rocks, which does help it quite a bit. But that's nice. That's a nice bridge. This is part of the loop here. The loop begins. You've got a couple of cross books. It says Southern Pacific on them. Very cool. I like it. Let me cover it. 2520. Okay, let me go down to the manual here and see what this means. All right. So it's essentially a speed sign. Okay, first number's passenger, second number's freight. Okay, that makes sense. The other ones are uh, mile posts. Each railroad has different ones, especially in different eras. They look different. I like these culverts here as well. Definitely a lot higher right here, as you can see. That son of a gun comes up a bit. Quite a bit. Cantara Loop. So, oh, sorry. Down there, that bridge is where that, uh, that big spill happened back in the 90s, if I'm not mistaken. Dumped a ton of stuff in the river. Look at that, though, man. Distant scenery. It's gorgeous. This is nice. Now, also, for what it's worth, I've got uh, Armstrong Powerhouse time of day weather um, placed in here. And I've got procedural flora off. So I should have turned that on. Um, at least I think it's still off. But uh, that may change the way things look a little bit. Look at this. This built embankment right here. That looks nice. This one right here as well. Yeah, that looks good. Nice. There's another one. Yeah, we are a lot higher. There's the tracks down there. Good God, that is a steep climb right there. I think that's the steepest bit. It's a lot more gradual when you're coming southbound. This looks good. Kind of in a ditch now. Let's see where we is. Mott. It's also a town up here called Azalea. Man, that's a canyon right there, man. Yay, yay, yay. Look at that. Three tracks. Boom, boom, boom. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Whistle post back there. Another crossing. Another crossing. 
It looks it looks very cleanly built. Just uh, scooching along here in the the small amount that I've done so far. Uh, we've probably covered like 20 miles tops. It looks it looks well built. Um, not seeing any floaties or things missing so far. It's like we got a truck stop over here. I believe that's I-5. It scooches onto the other side there. This line, if I'm not mistaken, uh, runs alongside I-5 for the most part. What kind of guarding signal there? This is Azalea. So it's essentially Mont Azalea. This old tower. That looks nice. Good deal. Is this new? I don't recall seeing that. I keep scooching. A little bit more open. Uh, up here on the left, uh, or no, I'm sorry, the right is the McLeod River Railroad. There should be a line that uh, that scooches off here. Let's see. Let's try to figure out where the hell we're at. Yeah, we're about here. So I'm going to leave the map there. We got a 40. So speed is up quite a bit. Compared to what it was. Like a little town or houses up there on the side. Yeah, this looks nice. I mean, it's it's definitely an A to B type of route. Uh, there's not really any industry. There's a little bit of stuff in the middle here, what we're getting to. Um, but I feel like that was the thing that kind of hampered Yellowhead Pass is it was the same deal. It was just a long, slow kind of slog mountain pass. This is a little bit of both. It's canyon and river running, and then you're up in the grasslands. Um, you know, so it should offer uh, a little bit of differentiation between uh, stuff you can do. Man, that's pretty. The way it's laid out, that's... Is that floating? I can't tell. It's hard to tell. Yeah, this is pretty up here, so under the interstate. I-5. Some industry over here. Seems a little quiet. I'm not really hearing ambient sound. Um kind of hear the road the highway not really hearing birds or like any kind of industry jibber jabber in a way getting higher there we go there's a little bit of ambient sound Whoop. right so this must be the town of Mount Shasta I think, because it's a, a pretty sizable town. It looks good, though. Every, the way everything's laid out, though, um, you know, tracks to roads to sidewalks, the rail bed itself, the trees, uh, it, looks, it looks pretty good. It's very clean. Doesn't really seem haphazard or messy, if you will. That old station here. No radio tower. Some sightings. Let's take a look at the MERP here. Yeah, it's Mount Shasta. Mount Shasta Spur. So it's basically just a yard. It's like there's a fuel station up here. Yeah, it looks pretty good, though. That, of course, is Mount Shasta right over there. I think that in front of us, that tall boy, is Black Butte. 
Now, there's a Black Butte in Oregon and California, so it's a bit confusing. Um, that's a nice asset. Danny's. So this, I think, is the uh, McLeod River Railroad that scooches off that away. Is it named? Yeah, Portal to McLeod. There you go. Up just south of the mountain this goes. You can't really go that far, obviously, but uh, it's there if you want to pretend to work something in and out of it or just use the yard there. Keep going north. Here's a fuel depot. Very nice. Now the crossing. And our switch is down here. Oh, got another speed, 40-35. All right, let's keep on cracking. Oh, I like that. The, uh, the road up on that slight incline there with the uh, safety railing. Looks pretty nice. Another bridge. I think that is I-5 or Interstate 5 again. What do we got here? Upton. There's also an Upton in Wyoming, I believe. All right, so it looks like we got a little industry here. I have no clue what this is, so let's take a gander. Upton Quarry, so it's a quarry. Okay, so a little something something you could do, I guess, if you want. It looks fairly bare. This is obviously the pit right there, I reckon. I like this little dirt road that runs along here as well. It looks good. It's a little bit of messed up terrain or grass texture there bleeding through. Some kind of weird, like, wavy effect going on next to the uh, tracks. So we are double tracked again. That is Black Butte. So Black Butte, um, for those that may not be aware, is essentially like an old lava dome or volcano. And it's just, there's a ton of uh, ancient lava, just crusted black lava and ash uh, up here as well. It's a, it's a neat looking place in real life. Now, Mount Shasta is that. It's, we're a bit far from it. We're definitely closer to Black Butte um, than Mount Shasta. I think we'll kind of run by it again up here in a minute. But that's about as close as you'll get. But it looks modeled very nice. There's, uh, I believe there's been a problem with keeping ice up there. If there is any left, there's not very much. And uh, Mount Shasta is a spooky place. There's a lot of weird like paranormal stuff. Uh, with Mount Shasta. There's believed to be some weird ass like lizard people living inside of it. Uh, it's been in a lot of, you know, video games and, and movies and folklore and stuff like that. A lot of people go missing. Uh, there's reported just numerous UFO sightings of Mount Shasta. Uh, Bigfoots, all kinds of crap. Um, <laughs> just really, really weird stuff. But one of the most notable things is, if I'm not mistaken, those of you that have played uh, Grand Theft Auto V, the, the mountain in that with the, the weird uh, hieroglyphs and stuff, I believe that's supposed to be Mount Shasta. That's what it's uh, supposed to represent. What do we got? Chow. Well, not named. Another bridge. This looks really nice. I mean, this is some really, really good uh, 
root building. I mean, Arizona Divide looked good, right? Yellowhead Pass looked pretty good, but uh, this is, you know, a little bit of different types of terrain uh, to and fro. All right, so we are in Black Butte. So there's a split here. Let's see what that's all about. All right, so it's a West Siding and West Main. I believe I got a couple of uh, pieces of rolling stock just chilling up here. Yeah, it's Black Butte right there. So it's fairly wide open. Uh, it's just the 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 long edge of the sides of these huge domes, essentially. But the elevation here is fairly high. It may not seem that way because it's relatively flat out here. But uh, we got an old water tower right here, which is pretty cool. A little shack. You know what would be cool is if. Uh, there was, this looks pretty good. Is this new? That don't look too bad there. I like those eye beams. That looks nice. That looks all right. That's got to be new, right? I don't recall seeing that before. Maybe not. But uh, what would be neat is if, because you know how in the Canadian Mountain Passes route there's like bear, right? So it would be cool if, if somebody built like a Sasquatch asset <laughs> and plopped it along the route or, or maybe like a distant UFO or something because there's Mount Shasta there. The railroad essentially, so that's south, right? The railroad essentially curved around that way on the other side of Black Butte and then the town of Mount Shasta is over that way. So we were kind of like over there. Now we're over here. Now this right here is the uh, the Siskiyou line to Eugene, Oregon. So that's pretty neat. It'd be cool to have the entire thing. So this is the Y. It curves a bit there. It should have the name up here. Yep, Siskiyou line. That would be nice to to have that at some point. Have that line and then have them uh, connected like people do with the. Uh, the Montana roots because this little bit of it looks pretty good it's it's got to wind its way up the side of this mountain here I mean it's it's a long kind of drawn out de-elevation down that way so it'd be a bit of a challenge just some crap here in the middle of the Y a lot of sightings here which is nice But anyway, Mount Shasta is essentially a volcano in the uh, Southern Cascade Range. Uh, it sits some 14,100-something feet high. And it's, uh, like I said, it's got a lot of weird, weird lore behind it. And uh, legends and tales and things of that nature. So the next place, I like the way this looks here. With the uh, the bush and rock all up the side there. That looks pretty damn good, man. So it's kind of, it looks a lot more er like arid and deserty out here, right? Like different different types of grass or ground textures. And uh, it's it can be like that out here. It's very lush down in those canyons and valleys which we were in. And then, it, you know, southern Oregon is fairly dry in a lot of places just like uh or eastern oregon and eastern washington so it, it's got a totally different look to it which is cool in uh, in this region now the next area should be hotlum or hotlum however the hell you want to say it so this i believe is part of the old volcanic rock that's why it's all dark and kind of frunky looking which is kind of cool. It's definitely something new to TS, I guess you could say. Um, that's pretty neat, though. And that a, a train line runs right through it. You can see the contrast between the ground and the actual uh, ballast and all that, which is neat. Q 
keep on scooching. Bit of a ditch. Yeah, this is some good looking terrain. I mean, it's totally different than the, the southern bit, but it's it looks nice all the same. Nice, nice vistas. Let's see, we got a Hotlum. Nope. Might have already passed it, I'm not sure. Oh, this is nice. Wow. That ridge, good God. That's pretty. And there's bushes, there's assets, 3D and 2D assets down there. Do, 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 do. Still going, okay. A little ravine there. There we go, Hotlum, or Hotlum. It's the next area. What we got here? Old tank car. Huh. What is that? Now that's what's neat about some of the uh, the milepost simulations routes is there's little uh, mementos, if you will, on some of the routes. And I honestly I have no clue what the freak that is. Um Let's see where the heck are we at here? Black Butte, Hotlum. Hotlum West, Hotlum Main. Yeah, you can see it right there. So that's where it is. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Huh. Definitely an old tank car. It's pretty cool though. And that's a damn gorgeous scenery. This is starting to remind me a little bit of Arizona Divide right here, the other uh, milepost route. That's pretty, man. Wow. That's pretty. Pretty, pretty. All right, let's scooch around the mountain here. I think the next, uh, I like this mountain road here. It looks like it'd be fun to drive. I think the next area up here is Andersite. Got another tower. Looks good. And this just kind of tracks the side of the uh, the mountain here, which is cool. Man, that's a deep valley there. There might be a UFO out here. Keep your eyes peeled. Oh, hello. Nice bridge. Wee doggies. That's pretty. I didn't know this was out here either. I look, I know like a little bit about the the Klamath Falls area and the Dunsmuir area and the Shasta area, but this I I don't know what that is, but that's gorgeous. Nice. Nice. All right, let's keep scooching. We might be about halfway. Maybe. It's gonna flatten out a lot up here. Some more of this uh just volcanic ash looking stuff through here I think is what this is and it's cool because it's just a totally different look uh, nothing really else like this in train sim as far as I can recall big open area here got another bridge yes we do very nice man Scenery for days on this route. Good God. Just hop in a train, stick your head out the window like a dog, and go to town. It's This looks totally different from down there uh, by Dunsmuir. Another uh, cross but guarded crossing. Mm. 
Mm, 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 mm. This place is pretty. Pretty, pretty. If we had some, oh, God, some really good, like, Southern Pacific rolling stock, like, really good. Uh, hi, yi, yi. I mean, you could, you could run a few different things here. You could run UP. I mean, the, the signals in the buildings and the cars and things like that may not be UP appropriate because that's who runs this line now is Union Pacific. Um, they kind of smothered Southern Pacific, uh, you know, once they they did the thing with each other. Uh, so you could run some UP here. Um, did the cab forwards ever run out here? The cab forward isn't too bad in the game. Uh, I don't know if those ran out here. I think they did. That'd be pretty interesting. Uh, you got the GS4, the Daylight. I don't know if there's any like rolling stock for that though, honestly. But man, oh. If if Searchlight Simulations did like an SP tunnel motor, oh. Oh. Oi. But let's be honest, you know, with, with a, a lot of American train sim stuff, for a lot of us, not everybody, and that's totally fine as always, you know, everybody's got their own opinions. Um, you know, for me, it's it's all about the Route 40 speed board there. And this thing is, is ticking all my boxes right here. This is pretty. It looks very, very well built. You know, I'm accustomed now to pretty much every North American TS route to have fairly undesirable rolling stock you know nothing new ever i mean maybe some touch-ups here and there uh but nothing ever ever truly new and i get it you know it takes time that probably takes a lot more time you know than building the route i don't know i can't do either i'm a pleb but uh you know so as, as far as the route like if you're looking into this for the route I'm not even done, and I'm just saying yes, 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 absolutely. Uh, rolling stock, you know, there's there's plenty of mods out there that that can be used. Hell, that SD9E, give that thing some some nice 567 uh, C sounds in that bad boy, and you're good. Like I I could honestly look past the interior, but for me, when it comes to rolling stock, it's got to tick at least a couple of boxes. Instead of just, you know, looks. I mean, while the rolling stock look okay that come with this route, which you can't say the same for a lot of North American stuff that comes out for, for TS. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's very few and far between. All right. We are now in Grass Lake. So I believe not only did we skip uh, Andersite, I guess there's really nothing in Andersite. I think this is the highest part of the route here in Grass Lake. So, let's try and find where the hell we're at here. Oh, there's Andersite. Okay. Let's see. This might be Grass Lake. Yeah, boy. Okay. So, there's a siding there. Yeah, so that's Grass Lake. And as you can see, there is what appears to be a lake, and it has got a bunch of grass in it. Aptly named. I like when things are named what they are. You know, like if I were to name that mountain, I'd call it Blue Mountain. It, uh, it's very helpful. So we've got an old Jeep, right? Which is nice. The Wagoneer. Woodside. But then we got like a new one. Literally unplayable. Come on. <laughs> I'm joking. But I'm not at the same time. Seriously though, like stick stick to one kind of car. Those those didn't exist in 1983. Now the tower. So that is the same tower. It's just dug in the ground, just sunk in. But it still looks good. Are those new? I don't know. Um, they look new. It's a good looking model. Got the highway out here. Sure. 
Next up should be an area called Pinoyar, or Pinoyar. I like that. That looks nice. Big, wide open, kind of swampy area. So this this is definitely like a mixed bag as far as the route. Um, it is not a mountain pass. Yes, there are mountains. Yes, there are passes. But uh, it's got a little bit of everything. But anywho, back back to the blabbing about uh, North American roots and rolling stock and kind of always getting the same deal. You know, um, I get it. Time, all that good stuff, especially if it's one or two people. I mean, let's let's look at searchlight simulations. I feel like I got to bring them up in every TS video I do because you know their stuff is amaze balls. Um, but it takes them years and years to make some of the best stuff in the game for North American uh, content. So it's totally understandable. It would just I'm just saying it would be nice to finally have some new rolling stock. So here we go. This is part of the new um, higher speed that we got here, 70 to 60. So 70, of course, is passenger, 60 is freight. That's still relatively quick. Um, it might just be for this straight section here. But, uh, you know, the way I look at it is like I'm, I'm, I'm into this for the route itself. If the route uh, was balls in the stock too, then, you know, no. Here we go. Here's Pinoyar. Pinoyar. But, uh, you know, luckily we've, we've gotten some decent looking routes here for North American stuff as of late, so. You know, if we could just get some, some rolling stock to go along with, that would be fantabulous. Next area is keg. Not much different than uh, something you put a ton of beer in. Except it's got two G's. This looks good, man. This looks pretty good. We've got to be, got to be getting uh, northbound, a little creek. Let's pretend we're in a, a bullet train at the helm. Is that Keg? Oh, it's Bray. Bray, what is Bray? I didn't know that existed. Okay, man, that's wide open right here. Jeez Louise. Still pretty though. Good God. I'm telling you, this is uh, if this is the standard for for. You know, now I'm not going to get into things like uh, signaling and signage and in in scenario building because I don't know how to do that. You know, I'm I'm not as astute as some of you, sadly. So I don't know if that's good enough to say that this route is like okay. You know what I mean? I'm just talking about from a visual aspect. It uh, it looks pretty damn good. Uh, frame wise, not really sure, but it doesn't seem to be giving me any problems. You know, I had a couple of trains set around and, uh, I don't have any kind of fancy equipment and it's, you know, it seems like it's rolling good. So got that crick down there to the right, kind of meandering alongside the tracks here. Ah. Uh, 
Bray. What is Bray? So did we go through uh, Keg? There's another big mountain up here called Mount Hebron. Or Hebron. Mount Hebe. All right, what's this? Hold up. Industry. I almost went right by that son of a gun. Did I pass this? What? Oh, this is Keg. Is this Keg? Keg? Yeah, okay, this is Keg. I was wondering where the hell Keg was. So, some kind of quarry industry, something you could do here, which is nice. I guess four scenario builders. Uh, it just says loading pit. I'm not sure what the real company is or if it's even here anymore, but it looks like something you could certainly do if you wanted to. Right on, right on. So Mount Hebron should be coming up here. Sixty fifty five, so still a pretty decent speed. That's what's cool about routes like this, you know, it's not just one thing. So, for example, a mountain pass, it's like, yeah, it's pretty, the scenery, but I don't know about you, but I just get tired of going 20 mile an hour for three hours, you know, to, to let's talk about Feather River for a minute. Um, how long would it take to do that entire line? I mean, it's gorgeous, but it's just slow. Uh, that's, that's what I liked about Arizona Divide. It's, you know, it's fairly quick, a little speedy mountainous in the uh in the west desert in the east diablo canyon i mean that's a cool route yellowhead pass ah it was pretty you know the mountains the the glacial lakes and rivers and all that but there was really nothing to it um you know there were some cool tunnels and some some switchbacks and and different lines with different grades and things of that nature um but uh it was it was kind of samey yellowhead pass um this is nice so we got farmland here this is a, a very large high valley so there is farmland up here Very nice. Just a long, straight bit of track here. What do we got? Mount Hebron. Okay. Mount Hebe. Where's Where's the mount? <laughs> uh, there doesn't appear to be a mount anywhere near. It just must be the town itself, which is here. Mount Hebe Hebe Doo Da. A little spur right there. Woo wee! This is flat and lengthy. This route seems like it's massive. Next up should be an area called McDowell. And what's nice is you can see all this in the manual. That's what I like about the uh, milepost manuals as of late. They're they're fairly in depth, and uh, they they give you a good feel of where you're running and what you're doing. Um, uh, they're 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 pretty nice maps. Like a little town here. Looks like it used to be rail serve. Some of these businesses. Looks like some some farming, some ag uh, community. Jeez Louise, this route. So there's uh, there's the river and canyon running. And then there's the, the mountainside, and then there's Shasta, and then there's the volcanic ash, ancient uh, volcanic rock, whatever the hell it's called. And then the color gradually changes, gets a little drier, still hilly, but now we're just in this massive, massive valley. 
This is insane. And the draw distance on these mountains as well, like that's that's pretty darn nice. That one's doing some funky bananas. Yeah, this this is uh damn good looking route. UFOs just get all the, the vehicles and traffic. Trying to just speed it up through this flat area here. I'm gonna bunny hop a few times. Good God. Where is this on the map? I had no clue. Okay, it's gotta be this right here. So that town, I think the little town we went through, the ag looking community was McDowell. I don't recall seeing a sign, but this right here has got to be what we're on. Goodness gracious. So we're coming up to Doris. It's a little pond on the right. Yep, Doris. Like a sleepy little town. The mountains kind of return, it would appear. Let's see what we got here in door. So we got a lumber spur and a warehouse and an old spur and then E spur. So it looks like a couple of things you could do here with uh, lumber, which is cool. Maybe some wood chippage. That's what that is. That's a big ass pile of wood chips there. So load that up. Some rail car. Or dump them. Whichever. To, fro, import, export. It's all the same. Empties east. Empties west. Good looking little town. It's lined up very nicely. I like this corner fence around this house. That looks pretty good. The road itself. That's smooth. You know, some creators will just do like a janky ass road and then it'll be a flat you know just that's nice and rounded there like the sidewalk and the uh the trees lining the sidewalk there that looks good it's a good looking little town so there's definitely some industry you could just work out of klamath falls up here essentially do some back and forthage what is this place? Is this new? Any of you guys ever seen this? Daily Special Roadhouse Cafe. That's a cool looking building. And it looks era appropriate. Huh. It looks, I mean, even the way the, the font is and everything, it looks new. It looks crispy. It looks too uh, clean to be something old. So there may be a few um, new actual building assets uh, in this. So we are crossing uh, into Oregon. This is essentially the state line right here. Got these crossing guards. Looks nice. So right above Doris is the Oregon state line. Got a tunnel. Very nice. I like these blocks along the side. That looks nice and clean. A little bit of terrain farting through the top there. See if we can find our way around. Got a couple of tanks right here. Or a tank. Uh, where's, where's the tracks? There it is. Okay. Whew. It's the other end. Bit of a curve. Tunnel motors. Ah, get it? Tunnel. Tunnel motors. So we are now on the dark side of the moon. Back out of the valley. I mean, dude, if, if there's a North American TS route that's got a lot of different geography changes, 
More than this, I can't think of one right now. Uh, it's different terrain, different ecology. It just it, there's a lot of different stuff here. It's an absolute chungus lake over there. Not sure what that be. So it rounds the mountains, flattens out a bit. Flattens out a lot. Big valley again. With this speedboard. We gotta be coming up to uh I think a town called Warden or Community. And the Klamath Falls ain't too far, and then that's a, uh, a huge hub between Southern Pacific up to Portland, Burlington Northern to Bieber, and then Southern Pacific uh, down to Salt Lake. So it's a big hub. All right, what is this? Uh, Warden. Okay, so we are in Warden. Elevator, spurs. Grain elevator, huh? So you can work that. Very nice. Do some work. It's nice to have industry. Got a little gas station in the truck shop. Truck stop. Shop stop. Baby de bop. Now I'm scatting. Train sim and scatting. This looks nice. Ah, it's irrigation. So these are fields. Okay. Water. I don't know why water does this. That is weird as hell. I've seen this on a few routes. That will make you throw up your lunch. That is weird. I don't know why that happens. It's strange. It's kind of doing the same over here. Oh, man. Okay. It looks cool, though. It's assuming I'm... Uh, I'm guessing an irrigation reservoir for uh, farming and whatnot. Very nice. This just even this out here looks totally different. Jesus, there's like four different. Uh, we'll call them biomes. Damn, what is that? There's definitely the alien spacecraft buried under that. That's crazy. Man. Oh, man. I love the fields out here, though. That's nice. Okay, so this, this kind of sucks. The water. I'm not sure why that's happening, but that's... Uh, That's a bit of a, a sad thing. Just trying to put it nicely without using vulgar terminology. Um, that sucks. I don't know if that can be fixed or not, but uh, it's weird. It's like this whole area. What in the hell is that? Aliens. That's what. So these huge ditches just cover... Size, I guess it's some sort of a uh, basin. So yeah, that was Warden Klamath Falls has got to be next, dude. This is weird. I like I don't mind reflective water, but when it does shit like that, um, I'm not happy. Makes me sad. Midland and not Texas. Do do do. So we are definitely well into Oregon now. Dee 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 dee. Other huge straight parts. Is this Midland right here? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So Klamath Falls, be up yar. Up yonder. 
Now that looks nice. Let's appreciate that uh, terrain work with the bridge there. That looks pretty good. That's sharp. Complete with whistleboard for the opposite direction. Yeah, this looks all right. The only thing that's kind of vibe killer for me is this water. Whatever the hell is going on with that water. Uh, big old power grid running through there. Another canal for irrigation. This is cool though. I mean, it's I'm I'm excited to have a new region or area for uh, North American TS. You know, there's there's really nothing else in this area. Uh, Feather River's not far. Um, Donner is not far. Um, but Oregon. I mean, come on, we get a bit of Oregon. That's cool. Okay, what in the holiest of F's is that my god okay that's not pretty man that is just a, a vibe killer totally lift bridge very nice very nice See where the heck are we at here? Wait, what is what? Huh? What is that? Hold up. Did I miss? I did. I missed that. Okay. Where did we come from? <laughs> I don't remember this over here. Sorry. All right. So this is this the bit? Let's see, Texum Y, Modoc South Leg. Okay, so that's the Modoc line. I believe that's SP. And then this, this is the one that goes to Salt Lake. So that's Klamath Falls B in Yard, Maine. Oh no, this is B into Beaver. Okay, so that's B in's Yard, pretty large. This is the one that's got to continue to Salt Lake there. Or is it? OC and E line. Industrial stuff. So this has got to be up to uh, Portland. Yeah. Okay. So we'll check them out one by one. Might not be a whole lot going on. Yeah. There's nothing down there. Shameful. All right. We'll keep on. I was just all consumed by that damn water. I wasn't paying attention. We went right by a big livestock auction type of place here. That's nice. It's like an old train station. Pilsi Blay. So here's the BN yard. And it's, you know, it's here, but there's like nothing here, you know, so. Yeah. Dude, this, I can't get over that water. That's tripping me out, man. So that... Is what? Where does this go? Because it's not named. It's got a pretty sizable uh, yard as well. I mean, it's got a lift bridge. It's cool as hell. That water could be fixed. This would be a nice, a nice workable area. Got our tower. Okay, cool. Got his 57 Chevy. Got the radio tower too, of course. Very nice. Lumba. See where the spur goes if it does anything. And here's the town of Klamath Falls. Looks like we got an old roundhouse or train shed up here on the right. Another pretty good sized railroad town, especially back in the day. So you could fill that thing out for sure. For sure. 
This one is not striped like the one in Dunsmuir, as you can see. Good size yard, good size little town. That makes absolutely no sense what I just said, good size little town. Um, good size town. So some strange billboards. It looks like it's built nice as well for, you know, for what you're supposed to see, I reckon, trackside and not really flying around in a, a heli chopper. Here's that building again. What is this from? I like it. Train station, sweet. All right, so I guess Amtrak was not, uh, for whatever reason, put on, um, eh, branding, I guess. But the building looks good. Nice looking building. It's, you know, it's a sad fate of, you know, if you're into passenger stuff, that is, uh, pretty much every North American TS route, you're going to have two stops. One at the beginning, one at the end. It's it's another one of those. But uh, whatevs. The way I look at it is it's nice to, to have an Amtrak or two go by while you're running freight, you know. This looks good. The old uh, road under the train bridge. Oh, hell. Look at that. Got little pedestrian tunnels as well. That's pretty cool. This could have been blended better, but, you know. Not going to raise cane about that. Another signal bridge. Nice. And that is it. Ball field. There's not much stuff out this way. You can see where the line's supposed to continue there, but that's it. So just a quick breeze through of the route itself in due time. I'm going to try and set up a nice run from end to end. Take it a little bit slower with some nice rolling stock and just uh, see the sights. I'm sure I missed several things. But um, yeah, I reckon that is it. I've been waiting on this one and it does not disappoint so far. It's a pretty route, that is for sure. And it's got a... A ton of uh, different scenery. I mean, it's nice. Nice route. Very nice route. The only thing is this huge issue with the water. I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, it looks like there were a few custom assets and the, the rolling stock updated some little tiny bit here and there. But uh, I will leave it here. This is probably already a 17 hour video at this point. But uh, anyway, if you made it this far, thank you for watching as always. And uh, I'll catch you next time. See ya.